G'day there, you're watching the Aussie Boom Guru and today we're going to be doing a Dynamo tutorial um, for a really commonly requested technique that I come across in Revit which is how to automate floor finishes based on their rooms uh, using Dynamo scripting. So essentially taking a parameter from a room or a piece of information, in this case the floor finish parameter, and creating a floor from that room's boundary and setting the type based on what that parameter is uh, to save a lot of time because during documentation phases typically room finish modeling can take a lot of time up. So we're going to be using this version of Dynamo today. Uh, for anyone that's been following along with my other tutorials, you'll notice that I've moved to 2.0.3. Um, which is not necessarily the endorsed stable build of Dynamo, um, but I find that it fixes a lot of issues that 2.0.2 was starting to show me, such as package discrepancies. So feel free to upgrade to this version if you're following along. Um, it should still work in 2.0.2 anyway. And um, we're gonna be using one custom node today, which is from Clockwork for Dynamo 2.x, which is all family types of category. And that is because the category collector nodes that come with Revit by default don't typically pick up system families like floors, walls, uh, ceilings, etc. So we're going to be using this one to get around it, which uses a bit of Python scripting um, that we don't have to write, obviously. So without further ado, let's actually start making the script. Um, so for a little bit of context, I've just set up a demonstration model. Um, we basically just have a really basic house um, that's got some walls, windows, doors. But the important part is that it has rooms. Um, so you'll see all these crosshairs are basically rooms in the house. And they're currently bound based on finish face. Um, so if you go up to architecture as your rooms tab in Revit, and you go area and volume computations, you can change where your walls are calculating from. So in this case, I've set my computation line to my finish line. And obviously each room has a number. Uh, but more importantly, each room has also been given a floor finish code in its information. So you'll see here that the bedroom, for example, in its parameters, uh, there's an out of the box parameter called floor finish. And I've just put in there a code, in this case, CPT1, which is my code for carpet. Because what I also have in my model is a set of floor finish uh, floor types. So I have carpet, timber, uh, and two sets of floor tiles, one for external spaces and one for internal spaces. So you can see here, for example, that my timber has been set with a material and a depth and a substrate. So uh, this will be just a concrete screed or an underlay. Um, and I've basically built those four types and these codes correlate. And I might just take these dashes out because they technically don't have dashes in them. And what's important about these floors um, is that they have a keynote. So down in the keynote field, this is what we'll be looking for in our script to match to our room parameters. So if I just check this one here, for example, you'll expect to see that floor finish is the same as the keynote we're trying to create a floor for. Um, obviously, maybe it would only take, you know, five, 10 minutes at the most to model all the floor finishes for this space. But um, imagine if this was a hospital that had uh, 20 floors and 100 rooms on each floor. Um, you could obviously save a lot of time with a script like this because the, the easy way to populate those floor finishes is actually in a schedule. So I made a room schedule and I added the fields name, number, and floor finish. And originally, I'll, I'll just wipe out the, the finish field just so, so I can show you how I populated it originally. Okay, so I'll just itemize again. So I just, um, it doesn't really matter how you sort them. Um, in this case, we will sort them by floor finish and we will turn off itemize. So currently, if I have itemize on, you'll see that everything is a row. Every room has its own row. Um, but what we'll do actually is sort by name and we'll turn off itemize and anything with a common name will get grouped on a row. So this actually represents uh, all bathrooms in the model when I select it. And this represents all bedrooms when I select it. Um, I'll do a tutorial on schedules at a later date just because I know that's quite an important technique as well. But basically if I populate floor tile one in the bathrooms, uh, you'll notice that both bathrooms had that update. So you can imagine if you had a thousand rooms, for example, and they all had common names, you could save yourself a lot of time uh, with that. So I'm just gonna populate these codes based on what I know they need to be. Um, so timber, then, now we have a garage. Um, the garage isn't gonna have a floor finish. So we're just gonna say NA, not applicable. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's not something contained in a keynote in a floor type. Because essentially the way we'll build the script is it will identify things that don't actually have a floor type to place and it will exclude them from the script. Okay, so now we've populated those floor finish codes. So now we can go to Dynamo. 
Uh, so we'll just open up Dynamo and let's quickly save as well. Okay, so we'll just make a new script and we'll go to manual mode. So we're going to start just by collecting our rooms. So we're going to get a category by name and we're going to get a string and we're going to look for rooms as our category. So we want to get all our rooms to begin with. Um, obviously in models with lots of rooms that can be quite a lot to deal with. Um, it's up to you how you want to filter down how much you start with in a model. But for this case, it should be fine. And we're going to get all elements of category. Okay. And that should give us all our rooms. So one of the really important nodes we're going to be using for this script is a, a room by floor boundary. So we're going to get our room boundary node and you've got a lot of options for how you pick your boundary line. We're doing finish as our boundary. And what will happen as soon as I run this is every room's boundary will become a curve in Dynamo or a set of curves. So you can already see that that's pretty much the backbone to how this script will work um, just by obtaining those room outlines. And you can more or less feed that into a floor by outline and type and level from there. So just as an example, let's just take all those curves and let's get a floor type. Let's say there's only one floor type that you wanted to, to populate such as carpet. And you feed that in there and we'll just get our levels and we'll just say ground floor for our level. So at this point, you could technically run this script and every room should build a floor based on its boundary. So if I run that, there you are, you see they've all got carpet now and each of those floors correlates to its room that it came from. Obviously in some areas, maybe that won't be ideal, such as this transition between dining and living, you may want that to be one floor. So it's up to you whether you go back and uh, merge their sketches by editing the profile of one and deleting the other, um, up to you. But you can already see that's the backbone to the script. So you might understand what to do from here, but um, we're going to do it anyway, which is basically just a list management exercise. So we'll keep that node off to the side uh, for later, because really now we need to filter down the rooms we care about and then find out what floor type we should be using for them. So we're going to get all floor types. So we're going to get all family types of category. And this is that clockwork node that I was showing you before. Um, so we're going to get the category of floors and we'll just add a toggle if we need to refresh the script. So for now, we'll just make that true. And I think by default, this node actually obtains the active document if you don't tell it otherwise. Um, so we'll just quickly run that. Okay. No, I actually do need to give it the, Oh, actually, no, sorry, I need to fit in a category by name, of course. I'm only fitting in a string. So you'll always remember in all my tutorials, I say that data types are critical. You need to feed in the right data for the right thing. Obviously, a string was not the right one there. So we'll run that, and there we go. Now we should have all our floor types available. And each of these rows represents a type, um, not an element placed of that type. So these are basically one, one per type in your project. What we want to do then is get the keynotes of each of those. So we're going to do a get parameter value by name. And we're going to take those and the parameter that we care about is keynote. So we'll just type in a string of keynote. And we should expect to see, there you go. We can see those keynotes of those. The rest of them haven't been given a keynote, so they just come up with a blank. So that's a list of keynotes, but now we need to also get the parameter values of our rooms as well. And we need to get that floor finish parameter. So we're just gonna move that down, take this, and we want floor finish. I'm just gonna move that boundary off to the side and we'll just, um, we'll keep it there. Okay, so we're gonna filter down based on this. So we'll go get parameter value by name. And there's all our parameters for floor finish. Um, obviously we've got an NA, so we need to get rid of that. So we're gonna use a filter by Boolean mask and we need to build a list of conditions to check. So we're gonna do a list contains and we're just gonna check if those values exist in this list of keynotes. So we need to use a list map as well to run this for every value for the full list of possibilities. So we're gonna map our keynotes and our function that we're gonna map is 
basically does this list contain the item? So if we run that, we should expect to get a list of, uh, actually, that should be the parameter value. Sorry about that. Let's move this down here. And if I rerun that, there we go. So we get all trues except for false where the garage is positioned as we'd expect. So now we're going to filter our list by that. And what that will do is take our ins and our out will be our garage. So we're just dealing with our in list now. Brilliant. Okay. From there, we've got our rooms. Okay. So now we need to get the index of, from this list of the respective keynote. And as you expect, we'll get indexes for everything except for our garage. So what we also need to do is just set up another filter by Boolean mask. I might just turn the preview off for those room boundaries because they're sort of in the way visually. There we go. But what we want to do is filter this list instead. And what we'll expect to obtain is just a list of all those with the garage excluded. And then all we need to do is to get item at index. And we're going to get the item from the original list of finishes at those indexes or those finish types, I should say. So we'll just lift that over there. Things are getting a little bit messy, so it's always good to come back and clean up your script after. So what we should expect is now a list of those respective types to apply. So now we have our types to apply to our rooms. And we also can get our finish boundaries out of our in list. And as you can see, now we have a set of lists that we can feed into this. So we're going to take those floor types, those sets of curves and our level. And we'll just set this to longest just in case, but I think it knows how to lace this list if your level is set to one um, instead of uh, 12 instances of that level to line up with 12 instances of rooms. Um, but there we go. So now we should expect if we run this script, that our floor finishes should update. I'm not sure which view is better to see it in, probably the floor plan actually. So we might just close our properties and we'll watch our script do its thing. Cool, save, we'll just save the script. Uh, okay, so if I run this, it should source all the starter now. Brilliant, um, and there you go. You can see we ended up with our tiles on our veranda, timber in these spaces, tiles as expected, and carpet as well. And you can see our garage has been excluded from the, uh, the exercise. And there you go, all our finishes are populated. So really, really dynamic script, um, and it can be applied to many scales of projects. So that, that's how that works, um, very cool. And there's obviously a lot of ways you can extend the usefulness of this script. Um, obviously, you might want to get profile openings from the base floor that it's going on so that you can deal with things such as stair atriums if the room is going across the void. Um, or there might be a column that's not bounding the room, but the base floor is cut around it. So you may need to improve the script to do that if you want. Um, you could also look at finding ways to set down portions of the base floor locally for things like tile set downs. Uh, quite complicated because it involves you having to detect the base floor and apply any modifications and create new floor types to set down. So it is a little bit complicated. Um, you could also offset applied finishes. So for example, I was putting carpet on a base floor there, but the carpet's sitting at the same level as the slab. What you really would want to do is actually push that carpet up by, say, the, the thickness of the floor type. So that would be just the second step on the script. Um, you can do the same thing with walls, so applying, say, tiles to walls, but there's a lot more to consider, uh, such as, you know, openings in walls. You'd need to deal with those either by joining the tiles to the walls behind them or using an edited profile, um, which is a little bit harder. And it's a shame because this script would be perfect for ceilings as well. However, ceilings have very limited access and Dynamo and the API of Revit at the moment. Hopefully in future, we'll see some development with this tool and be able to apply the same logic uh, using rooms. So that's all for today. Um, if you've got any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And um, I've got a Learn Dynamo series. If you're looking to learn the basics or the ins and outs of Dynamo, it's got a data centric focus. So feel free to check that out on my channel. Um, and if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, take care.